Now, the pressure of performing in front of such a group of august people such as yourself has... Uh, there we go. I knew I could turn that off. I just couldn't find it. I don't want to group the clips by date or content created. I just want to have them. So, so look at this. There's, there's switches everywhere. If you turn the switch on, you can say change the switch height, the clip height. Change the clip height. People are watching. You can change the size of the thumbnail. I've got all these thumbnails showing. Turn the switch off to hide it. Imagine what it would take to load each of these clips inside the viewer and hit the play button and play these things forward and backward. And in like, what, five seconds, I've been able to quickly view 12 clips at one time and decide if I like it or not. This is very cool stuff. Also, in spite of the fact that Apple is no longer using words like in and out, they're using things like beginning and end. The keyboard shortcut to set the start of your clip is the letter I, that sets an in. The letter O, that sets an out. And now I've got the in and the out marked on my clip. And there are keyboard shortcuts that will allow us to play from in to out, jump to the in, jump to the out. All the standard keyboard shortcuts that we expect and like are there. What's different, though, is how we edit the clip down to the timeline. There's actually five, four, five, six, six different ways that we can edit. I want to show you three or four of them. The very first way is this button right here. It's called an append edit. Keyboard shortcut is the letter E. Oh, you dog. This clip is actually a, is a, is a, a photo JPEG clip because it was downloaded as an archive format from Pond5. And it says, I don't recognize this format. What would you like me to convert it into? So just to keep it simple, I'm going to set this to NTSC DV. But notice I could set it to a 4K or any of the HD formats or NTSC or PAL. The only reason for keeping it NTSC is that my screen size isn't that big to begin with. And even if I did it at HD, you wouldn't notice the difference. I am going to set it to 16 by 9, so I'll set it to standard DV sizes. But I've got all the different image sizes that you would expect. And you have all the different frame rates that NTSC DV supports. So I'll just set it to that and click OK. OK, I now have a DV timeline. Shift-Z works the exact same way in Final Cut 10 as it does here in, in Final Cut 7. It expands whatever you have inside the timeline to get it to fit. And I've done an append edit, and I've now conf I've created the sequence settings that I'm going to use for this particular sequence. I want to put my playhead here. Notice that it's not at the end of the clip. I think after this electric runner, we need to have something really exciting. I think it's time for a polar bear. So I'm going to type the letter I, type the letter O. I've set the in and the out. I could click this button and do an append edit. In fact, I'm going to do it again. I use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter E. Watch, watch where the playhead is. And watch where the clip goes in two, one, woof. Where did the clip go? The clip went to the very end of the sequence. It doesn't edit at the position of the playhead. An append edit always edits to the end of the sequence. This means you don't have to worry where the playhead is necessarily. You can just do an append edit. It automatically adds the clip to the end. Well, let's try something different. Let's try this snowy day here. And this time, I'm going to do the second one in. It's called an insert edit. Keyboard shortcut is the letter W. Notice where my playhead is. Notice how much polar bear I've got here. In two, one, click. I've added the clip. It's sliced at the position of the playhead, pushing everything down. This is exactly the same kind of insert edit that we were used to before inside Final Cut 7. We do the exact same thing. Append is new. Insert, exactly the same. We also have the ability to do what's called an overwrite edit. The overwrite edit is not one of these buttons, but it's also a keyboard shortcut. We'll pick this uh, lady dancing on a bridge. And this time, the keyboard shortcut for an overwrite edit is the letter D, as in David. Watch what happens at the position of the playhead in two, one, woof. The overwrite edit slices the playhead at the position, slices the timeline at the position of the playhead, and lays the clip down replacing what was there with the new shot. What we've seen is we've got several familiar edits, an overwrite edit and an insert edit, and a new edit, an append edit. But we are frame accurate in all cases. They will edit at the end of the playhead, at the end of the timeline for the, the append, or at the position of the playhead. So we've got frame accurate ed editing. But everything we've been editing right now is in what's called the primary storyline. 
One clip has got audio. You can see the audio right here. It's attached to the clip. These clips are silent. We can determine how much we want to see of the thumbnail by throwing another switch down here. The switches allow you to control the display. I can say, just show me the audio, or show me most of the audio, like 75% audio, 25% picture, or 50-50, or 75-25, or all picture. As your sequences start to get really complex, we can go to lozenge view, which is this one right here. And now, it just gives me like a structural guideline of what I'm working with. In this case, I'm going to switch back here so we see just a little bit of the audio. Connections I'll talk about in a second. So we've been building our primary storyline and the audio comes with it. Let's say that I want to drop in a piece of B-roll here and we'll pick something which is a radically different color just so you can see the difference. When we add B-roll, that's this last button. This first button was doing an append edit. This button's doing an insert edit. And this button does a connection edit, or connected edit. Keyboard shortcut is E, W, and Q. And for those of you that can envision your keyboard, the letter E, W, and Q are right next to each other for the right hand. When I click on this button, watch right above the polar bear in two, one, woof, I've now got a B-roll clip added above the polar bear. And just as you would expect in Final Cut 7, whenever a clip is above another clip, it's always 100% full screen, always 100% opaque. We instantly switch from the A to the B-roll. Now here, we do have a little bit of something weird going on, and that is that if I wanted to apply a transition between these two clips, you just have to select the edit point, type Command T, and it automatically adds a transition between the two clips. If I want to apply a transition to a connected clip, you select the edit point, type Command T, and absolutely nothing happens. That's because this is a clip. In order for us to do things like transitions, we have to convert it to a storyline. Remember I said there's two storylines. There's the primary storyline and the secondary storyline. To convert it to a storyline, you go up to the clip menu, go down to create storyline. And now a thin bar appears over the top. You can see it right here. And what that bar means is now it's a storyline. And now when I select it, I can add a transition. And just as we can inside Final Cut 7, I can grab the edge of that transition, drag it back and forth, and change it. The same way that we can in 7, it's just the transitions are bigger. We can also do trimming under the transition. I'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to delete this clip for one second. I want to add, let's create a new event. I want to get something quick in here before Michael throws the hook at me. And this is Dr. Vint Cerf. This is an interview that I did with Dr. Cerf, who it could easily be argued that he did, in fact, invent the internet. I interviewed him in Van Nuys High School in 2004. And he not only gave me permission to use his interview, he gave me permission to use all the outtakes of his interview and to license the audio and the video, for which I am very grateful, because finding good audio and video is hard. And so I have to thank him for that act of generosity. Here, for instance, I've got a, a close-up of him, and here I've got a wide shot. Let us pretend that we're listening to this clip and we have very carefully listened to the clip. I'm selecting all that and deleting so the primary storyline is empty. Command A selects everything. The delete button deletes it. These are keyboard shortcuts we all know. So I'm going to start with a wide shot. Let's pretend we listen to it and that's where the start of his talking head is. And that's the end. I'm going to type the letter E, edit it down to the timeline. And we'll go to the close-up, we'll listen, and the next piece of content is absolutely right there. Type the letter E, edit that down to the timeline. And this circle means it's still being imported. But even though it's being imported, I can still work with these clips and be able to, to view them and trim them. Even though it's still optimizing, it's still importing, all the background work is going on, I still haven't wasted a second waiting for that clip to come in. What I want to do, though, is I want to be able to trim the edit. We can see here that we've got audio with this clip, and we've got audio with that clip, and ultimately the waveforms will show up down here. There's nine different ways that we can trim our clips inside Final Cut 10, but I want to show you one that I think is very cool. One is, is the Precision Editor. Double-click on an edit point, and it opens up the Precision Editor. When a Precision Editor is open, the outgoing clip is up here. The incoming clip is down here. 
If you want to do a roll, just click in the middle and I'm now rolling the trim back and forth. If you want to do a ripple to the out, grab up here and you're rippling the out. You want to do a ripple to the in, grab and drag, you're doing a ripple to the in. If that's selected, comma, moves left, period, moves right, shift, comma, moves left, shift, period, moves right, the same keyboard shortcuts that we're used to before. If you want to dial in a time code offset, type plus 20, enter, and I just move 20 frames to the right, type minus, uh, minus uh, 15, enter, I just move 15 frames to the right, to the left, negative moves left, positive moves right, exactly the same as we have inside Final Cut. So all the trimming techniques that we've been used to all along, we still have access to, still frame accurate, the comma and period, shift comma, shift period, the JKL keys still work. In fact, if I select a, an edit point here, and I want to jump the playhead to the edit point, for instance there, I've got them both selected, type shift X, shift X will automatically take the selected edit point and jump exactly where you want. So a lot of the trimming that we've been used to inside Final Cut is still there, it's just buried in a different interface. So what we've seen, oh, now I want to do a piece of B-roll. So let's go back to our Pond 5 clips and he's talking about Actually, he's talking about interstellar internet, which is just way cool. Letter Q, drop this in, grab the tail end of the clip, drag it back over here. Command G converts it to a storyline. Command T adds the transition. Notice that I now have audio meters over here. I don't have the sound from this computer turned on, so you'll just have to imagine he's saying something that makes sense. But as you can tell, we didn't spend a whole, wait a minute, we have a problem. Here's a four by three, and this is 16 by nine. This is so cool, watch this. We make changes inside the inspector. Keyboard shortcut is command four. We have two different aspect ratios inside the timeline. If I grab this clip and go down to the bottom, there's a thing called spatial conform. When I click the blue show button, it opens up the spatial conform. And just so you can see what's going on, let me squeeze this back a bit here. Select this clip. When I say fit, it fits the entire image into the window. When I set it to fill, it zooms in, uh, sorry, fit, if it will give me uh, letterboxing top and bottom. Fill will zoom in the image so it entirely fills the frame. So I don't have letterboxing, but I lose a little bit of stuff on the left and right edges. And none means it displays the image at 100%. So I could use this as a way of uh, zooming around on a 1080 picture that I'm moving into a 720 timeline. The spatial conform, if I set this to fill, and now when I play this back, the image fills the frame. Without me having to worry about using the distort setting or without me having to change the, uh, the aspect ratio of the clip, it just automatically handles it for me. Notice this orange bar indicates it needs to be rendered. Without me doing anything, it's now rendered the clip, so the effect is now rendered at high quality. I didn't have to wait my editing for that to happen, it just goes automatically. I've been going for half an hour, and I'm going to stop for a second because I want to come down and answer questions. But what I want to reassure you is that there's a lot of power here, and if the, the application as it lives right now meets your need, it absolutely is worth experimenting with. Now there's a couple caveats. I think it's a little bit buggier than it needs to be, and I would, before I put this into real-time heavy-duty use, I'd get a dot one release from Apple just to get the bug fixes out, which is absolutely no difference than a 4.0 release of Final Cut or the 5.0 or the 6.0 or the 7.0. You pick any dot zero release, it didn't really become stable till dot oh one or dot oh two, and this is the way that that software develops. We got to give it time to get it in the market and get it to be fixed. But is this something worth looking at? I think. Absolutely. Is there some power here that can benefit people that are on short deadlines? Absolutely. And if the features are something that you're interested in, then it's worth looking at. Michael, let me come downstairs and answer some questions and uh, we'll see what we can do from there.